Everyone, welcome to another edition of CEO Wisdom Podcast. Today we have Jason Gilmore with us. He's CEO at Treehouse. Jason, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and tell us a bit more about Treehouse? Sure thing, Charles. And thank you for the invitation to, to join today's podcast. So again, my name is Jason Gilmore, and I um, am part of the Treehouse team and have been for uh, fast approaching a year now. It's hard to believe that the <laughs> year has, has flown by so quickly. A Treehouse is an online platform that teaches people how to code and, and design as well. Over the course of the company's history, which is about 10 years or so, uh, we've seen <clears throat> about 1.2 million uh, students learn from our curriculum and subsequently move on to become web developers and data scientists and designers and um, find many other positions in the tech industry. As far as my background goes, I again, I've been in part of the team for uh, just about 11 months now. And prior to joining Treehouse, I served as the CTO of Dream Factory for just about four years. And Dream Factory builds a namesake API generation and management tool that's used by organizations all around the, all around the globe. And prior to that, um, worked as a consultant within the, gosh, the telecom, agricultural, environmental, education, and publishing industries for, for just about 15 years. Yeah, that's you have an interesting background. Uh, that would be your first official CEO role, right? That is correct. Yeah, this is this is my first go around. So a lot of a lot of valuable lessons have been learned. <laughs> yeah, over the course of the year. Well, Treehouse has been acquired um, by this private equity firm, I believe. That was like a year ago. Uh, can you walk us through like how they picked you um, as a CEO for this company? Did you knew them before? Were you part of their uh, repertoire of CEOs that they have that they had? How did that happen? So this is a a, um, a great question. Uh, you are correct. Xenon Partners acquired Treehouse. We started due diligence on the company, I believe, in late October of 21. And that wrapped up in mid-December, um, culminating with the acquisition of Treehouse on December 15th. So my um, involvement with, Zen with Xenon stems back to March of 2018. In fact, um, they had acquired Dream Factory at that time. And um, Dream Factory is built on a popular PHP framework called Laravel. And so when you, when you do due diligence on a, on a tech company, naturally you're going to bring in experts with regards to the sales process, marketing operations, but also tech, of course. And in this particular case, um, I was contacted um, because I had written a couple books on Laravel and had a popular blog about the topic and just really loved talking about Laravel. And mm -hmm. so they were looking for somebody who was familiar enough with the framework to offer a technical perspective on the product. And honestly, I was, I was, gosh, technical due diligence is probably worth a podcast unto itself, but I was working on a really interesting telecom project at the time and a mutual acquaintance made the introduction and in all candor, I thought the, I thought this was going to be a, a two week contract. And I thought I'd buzz in, do the due <laughs> diligence and go on my merry way. But a funny thing happened when that started. And that is that I, I really fell in love with that product, the dream factory API generation um, platform specifically, it was uh, not only built on my my favorite programming language PHP, but my favorite framework. Um, but it it satisfied this need to generate APIs on top of data sources like a MySQL database or Oracle or a, 
S3 um, bucket, and it did so literally with the push of a button. And I, I had never seen a product like that. In fact, I was that telecom product I was working on, um, we were in fact building an API for what has since become a very popular uh, mobile application in the app store and in the Android store. So I was like really feeling that pain of API development. So when I saw this project, I thought, well, where has this been all my life and why isn't everybody using it? And so following the acquisition, um, there was an opportunity to work on a couple other post acquisition um, projects for Dream Factory. And along the way, I really you know, became friends with several of the Xenon employees. And um, amazingly, here we are um, fast approaching almost five years. And um, I'm still very happily with Xenon and, and learning a lot and having a lot of fun every day. Now, as far as the transition to Treehouse goes, well, I, I mentioned the, the Laravel books that I had written um, going all the way back to the beginning of my career. I'm not quite sure why I was drawn to this so early on, but I just really enjoyed writing about the technology that I was learning at the time, writing articles about it, writing blog posts about it. And that, much to my amazement to this day, um, turned into a, a, a book offer by the publisher A Press. And I was young and dumb at the time. And I thought, sure, I, I would love to write a book. <laughs> and I, one book turned into two, to three, to four. And um, so I've always enjoyed that aspect of trying to teach others what, what I'm learning. And um, subsequent to that, in I think 2007, along with a couple of friends, I co-founded a software conference called CodeMash and the goal behind CodeMash, and it still runs to this very day. In fact, the 14th, am I right about that? Or 15th um, edition will happen in January of 23. And uh, the, the idea behind CodeMash was don't go there if you're a Java developer and sit in on Java sessions, go there and learn PHP, go there and learn Python, like learn something new. And in doing so, you're going to obviously broaden your horizons and um, maybe take something valuable and new back to your organization. So whether it was the articles, whether it was the books, I wound up doing an editorial stint at A Press, um, editing 70 or so books um, over several years. Um, I've always just really enjoyed teaching others. So when Xenon had the opportunity to acquire Treehouse, Treehouse having a business of educating developers and designers, um, it turns out that it seemed like a logical a logical transition for me to move from Dream Factory to to Treehouse, and so so here we are. Yeah, pre um, relevant background. What's the model at at Xenon? Are you like a, a partner there? Do you have equity? Like how how does it work? And is it like a a contract with Treehouse, or you're the definitive CEO? Like how how does it how does it work? And what what is your plan with it? Um. So my, I guess my relationship with Xenon is, so there's like any organization, there's different roles. And I guess my role there is as what's called a principal yeah. at Xenon. I, to be perfectly clear, spend 95% of not only my working day, but my waking moments um, focused on Treehouse. Yeah. But in addition to that, I'll assist with technical due diligence for the companies mm -hmm. that that we we've acquired in the in the years since 2018, and also just act as a a sounding board. Right, we we own 15 um, tech companies of of different types, and there's always something going on with infrastructure choices or technology choices or training. Um, 
and you know, I've been doing this for now 20, 20 plus years, right? I've been working in the tech industry in various roles. And so have to a certain extent, you know, seen a lot and I guess experienced a lot during my time. And so whenever there's an opportunity to provide a different perspective on um, these companies from a, from a tech perspective, of course, I, I'm, I'm happy to do so. Yeah, I also seen a recent acquisition of uh, Bear Metrics, which is another cool one. Um, I'm guessing like Treehouse and Bear Metrics are the most known one in the the common world, uh, but that that's pretty impressive. Um, also, yeah. I want to ask, um, how's the transition between CTO and CEO? Like, was it a, a drastic change for you? And what are the the key differences in between the positions? This to me has really been the, the cause of so many epiphanies uh, going back to last December um, as the <clears throat> as the CTO of Dream Factory. Um, my my job naturally was focused on making technology specific decisions, always keeping the business in mind. Of course, we don't make these decisions in a vacuum. Um, so whether it was um, focusing on product development, like what features are going to add the most value to the platform, or whether it was interacting with customers, which over the course of four years, I, I don't know what this exact number is, but I certainly spoke with somewhere north of a thousand customers sat on over a thousand sales calls. So offering that um, that technical perspective with regards to whether that product's going to fit uh, within their particular organization um, or talking about how we can better educate um, developers. So my, my, my role as CTO there was a combination of um, technology-related decisions, sales-related decisions from, a, again, offering that technical perspective. Well, That, that transition from CTO to CEO means that you are focused on a, a much more broad set of issues, right? Not, not only are we or am I um, looking at the product on a daily basis, asking the question, well, how could we, how might we make it better? But we're, I'm focused on, obviously, the financial side of things, ensuring that the business is moving in the right direction. I, along with our director of operations, Carrie Brooks, am very involved in hiring. We've, we've been hiring staff, team members, I feel like every two weeks, it seems like, going back to, back to January. So focused on that. Um, certainly focused on 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 team happiness, making sure our, our employees are happy and empowered to do their jobs. So it's, it's a much broader set of responsibilities that um, go far beyond what one might typically find as a, a CTO. And it's been, you know, honestly, and I'm glad that this is the case, it's been a, it's been a learning process for me, right? Some of, some of this is new to yeah. me. And um, it's been a blessing to, to have this opportunity to, um, to make this transition. And how was the transition specifically? Because um, when a business sells to a new CEO, it's always kind of rough waters. Like, did people accept you as their new CEOs? Did they accept your vision? Tell us about these first weeks when you, you took the CEO ring. So you're, you're absolutely right. I think any transition of ownership is going to be, frankly, a stressful time for the existing team. And um, I've not only a treehouse, but I've seen this on, on numerous other occasions as Xenon has acquired other companies. It's just, there's just a level of uncertainty that is only going to be cleared up through actions and not words, right? Like we, we, could, uh, we could say 
anything and everything to reassure a team, but in the end, that reassurance is only going to occur um, after the acquisition, right? So I think one of the cool things about Xenon is the companies that, I guess not to go too far down the Xenon path, but the companies that we acquire, we, we were in love with these products. Like that's, that's what drew us to that company, right? We're, many of us are techies, so we primarily acquire um, technology oriented companies, uh, developer tools and so forth. So we're like, we're really in love with these products. And um, maybe because of that, and because we're newbies still, right? We, we come into the picture maybe with a little bit of a different perspective. And um, again, because our, our interest level, our, our love with this product is, is, is such, I think because of that, we inject maybe a certain level of new energy into the team because we don't really see what happened in the past. We, we can only dream about what lies ahead, right? And so I, I would, I guess the, the Treehouse team would really be the judge of this, but I, I feel like although there was that uncertainty to be sure in the early weeks and frankly, maybe even the early months following the acquisition, I feel like we have a really great team that um, is very much on board with empowering our students, um, helping them learn what they need to learn um, in order to make that transition to the tech sector. Like we, we work with companies, right? We work with well-known corporations, but we also work with libraries. We work with great nonprofits such as Operation Code, such as a Prosper Appalachia, Anita B, the West Virginia Coding Club and so forth. And all of these organizations, each of them has maybe a different angle on things, but all of these organizations have a primary purpose of um, helping anyone with an interest start a career in the tech industry, right? And so our team, I, I feel like is really behind this, this vision that, that the tech sector and job demand is clearly indicates this, the demand for developers is extremely high, even in today's economic environment. There's just not enough developers out there. So if we can play a, a maybe a small role in helping achieve that vision, then as far as I'm concerned, mission accomplished. And I feel like the rest of our team um, has that, shares that vision as well. And when you have that shared vision, Generally speaking, I feel like you have a pretty, a pretty happy team. So what was the change in the business model when you came in? Did pricing plans change and did the, the core fundamental business model change after you were brought in? Um, it's, it's difficult for me to speak to what happened prior to my coming into the picture. It's almost like in these situations, you're, you're kind of like stepping through a door and that door kind of closes, that door to the past kind of closes behind you. And it's hard to see like what, what was there previously. So, I mean, I could like, there have been of course pricing experiments over the years and things like that, that I'm, that I'm aware of. I mean, our, our core business model, which is a subscription based uh, educational service that that really hasn't changed we offer three separate products uh, courses and courses plus which um, effectively give students access to our enormous library thousands and thousands of hours of videos quizzes coding challenges coding workspaces but then we also offer something called a tech degree which is a self-paced online um, boot camp effectively and those, these, these tech degrees in terms of completion time range from, maybe I'm being a little aggressive here, but three months for like the Python tech degree, um, all the way up to six or seven months on average 
for the full stack JavaScript or web development tech degree. And so that, that really hasn't changed. Um, I mean, naturally we've, we've made tweaks and we've, you know, changed details. We've, we've um, audited the, the course curriculum. Um, we spent a lot of time on the marketing website, trying to better convey the, the, the value that these, these various products give you. But again, I'll go back to this idea that we, I was, was already in love with the, the Treehouse product. So we really didn't have any vision in terms of trying to radically change things, but rather to improve it, of course, to make, to make the product better, to, um, to make the, the value of completing a tech degree even um, more obvious on the marketing website. And, and I'll say above all, talk to as many students as we, as we possibly can. And I do that each and every week, meet with students over Zoom. I mean, I guess I'll let you and anybody <clears throat> listening to this on, in on a little secret. One of the really cool things we're working on and we're rolling out like literally next week is going to be um, a career um, related service associated with tech degrees. So a lot of our students, they come into the tech degree and I think we do a pretty good job, better than most of um, giving these students a really solid curriculum and a path towards proficiency. So where, where we want to go next is as these students are working through the tech degree, we want to start providing students with, and I stress one-on-one -on -one guidance regarding their resume. What should you include in a resume if you don't have prior tech experience? Like what's gonna capture the attention of a prospective employer? Uh, interview strategies, interview rehearsals, and so forth. So that's, if, if I were to, I guess, maybe it's a very long answer to your question, but the changes that are, that have been made to Treehouse are, are actually starting to occur now in that <clears throat> we're expanding um, the availability of services that we believe are going to help notably our tech degree students, but eventually all students help them land jobs in the tech sector. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. That's pretty cool. And uh, last but not least, cause we're, we're both on schedules. Um, what about the enterprise plans? Have, have you guys been pushing towards that? Uh, is the real money there or is it still with people uh, needing uh, tech uh, degrees? Um, have you been pushing for more enterprise plans? This is a great question. So demand is strong on both sides and on the, the B2B side, the, the enterprise side, one of the, one of the really great features of the platform that frankly, I don't, we're, we're getting there. I don't think we do a great job of communicating just yet is yes, of course, any, any, um, employee, any team member associated with a company who signs up the Treehouse, of course, you have access to the entire course curriculum. We can create custom tracks for you. So if you wanted to learn a little bit, you, if you wanted your employees to learn a little bit about security, maybe, maybe it's kind of like employee onboarding, right? You want them to learn a little bit about web security, a little bit about um, data analysis, um, a little bit about um, pr presentations, we could create a custom track just specifically for your organization. And what is so cool about that, not only do you have, again, that custom track, but whether your employees are in our standard catalog, learning from the standard curriculum, or from a custom track, all of that data, all of those learning metrics get funneled into our um, dashboards that are available to group and departmental administrators. And this is not, um, I, I, this is the part I don't think we're, we're great at communicating just yet. This is not, you know, John Smith logged in and took this class yesterday. This is telling you um, how many quiz questions have been missed, 
um, what, um, what each employee's skill chart looks like, how many badges they've earned, um, how far along they are in a track, um, how much more time is left in a tech degree or a track. I mean, it offers really great and valuable insights. And the reason why I'm so excited about this particular feature is, is because, not because it, you know, it provides a way for a manager to be staring over an employee's shoulder, but it's so rich in terms of the information that it conveys that if you have a weekly one-on-one -on -one with a particular employee, you can look at that employee's activity chart and um, gain some really valuable insights into what, what, what's being learned, maybe areas of struggle, maybe areas that the employee's really digging into. So um, maybe, again, maybe John Smith is taking an interest in data science recently. So maybe there's an opportunity to move that employee into a data science related project and really help them move their careers forward. And to me, that's the most exciting part of that, of that enterprise plan is all of those rich dashboards that are included. So, you know, you, you often hear um, advice being passed around to SaaS companies where you can be a B2C or you can be a B2B but you can't be both. I, I, I don't, I guess time will tell, but I, I do want Treehouse to cater to both because I think there's a great deal of value that can be provided, whether you're an organization or whether you are a newcomer to tech who has an interest in landing that first role in technology. Pretty cool. Well, Jason, thank you so much for coming in today. Where can people find out more about you and Treehouse? Sure thing. Um, as far as Treehouse goes, I invite everybody to head over to teamtreehouse.com. Again, that's teamtreehouse.com. You'll find us on all of the, the social media channels, of course. Um, our YouTube channel in particular is very popular. And as far as I go, boy, I would, I guess I would suggest emailing me at jason.gilmore at teamtreehouse.com.